Okay. Okay. So one of the questions that came up last week was the incentives. Do the incentives incentives come back to the town, or do they go to somewhere else? They back to town. Dar Darius um, Desto, who's our superintendent, has indicated that uh, the rebates will come back to the town, which is. Does that mean that? We're going to see forty percent back of sixty-three thousand, or we're outlaying sixty-three thousand plus twenty percent. We're going to repay forty percent. We didn't did that, that. You'll get you'll get the forty percent back from that sixty-three thousand. So that, we're if we're spending sixty-three thousand. Sixty-three thousand. Yes. We're only paying sixty percent. That's sixty-three thousand. So we have to you have to appropriate the proper money, yeah. even though the money is going to come back through the incentives. But barring the incentives don't change between now and whatever, yeah. um, and you get a check set, sent back to the town. Okay. I will just throw it out there that the town of Deerfield said, "Here's your full project. You take the money back and roll it back in and get more of the rooms done." So that we don't have to come back to the table as many times, but that's it has to be worked out with the town. You can't just roll it back to us. Mm -hmm. because it is the town paying for, which but, raises a good question: How many rooms does this supply, and what's the percentage of the building that's going to be? So I did send as part of the documents that was sent to the committee. Here's a map of the school. Um, do you guys have that picture map? So like that. I did not send that. I, 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 I did not. For, I did not have it. Um, did you want me to send it to you? To the town admin. Um, Trisha will is taking over that email now. She sent it previously and might have gone lost in the change. Um, we have a question here. Yes. Yeah, well, so my question is. That you said that the mini splits will be primarily for cooling. So that implies that we're they're not going to accrue any energy savings to us, but they'll add additional energy costs in the form of cooling costs, right? So when I have mini splits in my house, which I do, we use them to heat as well as to cool. Why not use the mini splits to heat uh, more and reduce our use of, I guess, it's natural gas, right? It is natural gas. And you can you and we could. And so the building, the EMS system is robust enough to take on the additional role of managing all these mini splits yeah. with yeah. a little tweaking. Wait, Waitley is fortunate enough to have the most up to date one of all. Great. And the other question, which was raised by one of us last week or two weeks ago, was the state of uh, the state of uh, the ductwork system in terms of. Uh, being clean and safe and you know maintained at a at a good level for the students who have to breathe the air that's coming out of it. And that if we use the mini splits, they, they're not like unit vents. They don't have an outside air intake, right? So we have to rely, we have to get air from somewhere else. And that will I assume come from the heating system, ductwork, but it won't be uh, necessarily responding to temperature, but it will be ensuring the students get however CF, CFM per person they need per hour, whatever. That won't change. Yep. Okay, so that'll be delivered. Okay. Yeah, the mini splits are just recirculating. Yeah. No, there's, there's no, no, there's no, there's there's no, any no, there's no sterilization, there's no sanitation, there's no filtration. Which that was my concern. Now that you touched upon the duct work and we, while we're talking about the environment, Heat, heat and cooling. Um, you went. You 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 had a tour with yeah. Bill and uh, found out after that tour that the ductwork has never been cleaned in the school. Yeah. Um, now, what's after looking back, um, the cleaning of the ductwork by the um, Wakeley um, School committee has been requested twice okay yeah. and it was it was always positioned low in the uh in the pecking order we always went down to you know below c we never looked you know and but i don't think we were ever told that those requests were the first requests to clean that system ever i don't jim yeah. sorry um, 
So that add that sheds new light onto that particular um, expense. And um, I don't know about you guys, but if you don't have a clean ductwork system bringing air into the school, how can you um, be assured it's a safe environment? Um, well, we had a walk through with Bill Hildren and uh, Tommy and Jim. He doesn't put on much on. This isn't something that was like just on his part or Harry's part or anything. This is something that's fallen in cracks so many years. Yes. No question. Yeah. You all have to clean the bucks in your house. Well, know? I don't have them. So, but, so this is, this is year, nothing, on that, year, this this is nothing that they've, yeah. there's no negligence on their part whatsoever. Right. This comes from the, I mean, mm -hmm. the town of Hatfield. Like yeah. You said they mm -hmm. were absolutely disgusting and they're COVID. They got theirs clean with these ARPA funds. Yeah. So the town has ARPA funds that's going to expend by the end of the year. And this is a fantastic use for those ARPA funds. I agree. In my yeah. opinion. And um, if we can save the uh, clean air for the kids and the school system and the employees, yeah. well, I want to question this slide one time. So I would have to think we, we would need to have a discussion and uh, raising the, um, the importance of that cleaning. To uh, you know, to the A or B level, and how that would um, would impact the budget. Do so, we see yeah, the select kind of over the money through the ARPA funds before we put the capital list? Mm, you're going to get up against it here. I don't know. There's a lot of people going after. There's a lot of things project, going after ARPA projects money. going after the ARPA money. Um, Okay. Um, did by any chance did uh, have we come to understand what percentage of the school is going to be um, Gary's? At well, I just said that the document, the map, just kind of spelled yeah. all out. It's kind of it's a lot easier to explain. Would you like to see it? Sure. <laughs> oh, I was sitting right there. I'm pretty sure she had to go. Yeah. Oh, got it. Got it. Oh, she had to go. It. Right. It's easier to see in the color, but. Thank you. They don't have color. 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 They don't so what, we did have it's, uh, capability of projecting it on there, but not tonight. Um, okay. Uh, okay, Bill. Um, so we're looking at. Do they come up with different shades? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So we'll look at grade one. Three numbers, Bill, and kind of just label off each one. So, sorry, I have a mouse coming. Well, you can see the, 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 the orange. No, no. Nope. Like, 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 let's go. Let, let, let's go by grade. So we all we all have the grades and the particular rooms. So. Uh, we we know right now. Well, we know the library, the um, the nurses' room, the principal's office, main office is done. Um, so I'm assuming. So let's start with grade one. Yep. Twenty 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 five. Twenty twenty six. That looks to be in the yeah, second phase. Oh, that's in the second phase. Okay. All right. So that whole stretch. So after school, one oh nine. Grade three, 108, grade two, 107, grade okay, four, yeah. 105. So they're all phase two and across the hall. Yeah. Kindergarten pre K is phase two. The phase one is the, um, for 2025, is looking up at the top, very working way down. Grade four, music, art, music, grade five, grade six. The library has already been done. Okay. Wow. Of course. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, okay. Have we seen? No, we never. We know. Um, are we going to see a cost savings having these? Well, I guess it'll depend on how much you use it during those tweener times. Because okay. Bill kind of said, you know, your May mornings, you fire up the boiler because it's, 
you know, low fifties in the classrooms where you turn on the mini splits. Okay. And so you, you could get savings there. Um, we have done a full kind of Conway is all but one classroom. We're finishing up two classrooms rather, one of the classrooms that off space. Um, but they have had their whole building done um, in this with this model, um, and they have not seen a significant change in electrical. It's tough also because we put it in during COVID. In COVID, we had windows open, so the electrical was kind of inflated slightly. And the electrical was beginning to go slightly inflated because windows were a little more. Um, but you know, again. This also is controlling um, humidity in the classrooms, which is important, um, especially if you had some of those spikes, those spikes of humidity and such, um, which has also been kind of been important as well. So it's um, and so the next stage is so just so you know what other we're doing downtown. So Deerfield um, just again last night did approved to do their phase two of three phases. They have three phases in their building. And meanwhile, their energy committee is working with green communities to try to get a grant to update the BMS system to tie that in. Because then you can talk about, they're looking for energy savings. Yeah. So we use the yeah. energy savings with uh, Eversource to get the units. And then we're gonna use the Everseen, we're gonna use the green energy, uh, green communities grant money to go after, because with a BMS system, you can show that you're gonna save money because you'll be able to control it at a minor tip and put in those new thermostats and all the classrooms and that kind of stuff to be able to control that though. So that's the, so Deerfield's kind of a half step ahead and which is a nice place to be because you can see where yeah. there's been steps and how to do it. Right. Um, and I've actually told their, their committee that they're the leader and so the other communities are kind of watching um, mm -hmm. that with uh, Conway's Green Community as well. They're kind of seeing how they're in the, during that budget right now. They're actually applying for it right now. So we'll know in September what they got for funds and, and how that's going to pan out. Yeah. We will need less money because you already have a better BMS system. Deerfield doesn't have a BMS system that, that works the same way. So we are actually looking for hundreds of thousands of dollars to upgrade everything from lighting to all the heat and such. But the technology can be fantastic. I have to keep up technology in my elbow, but I have the PV to offset it. So we don't have PV to offset the electric cost among us. The question is <laughs> will it? Initially, when we have these in, until we have technology that allows the two systems to operate together, will it require um, human interference to make to make it all comfortable? Let's put it that way. Yeah, my custodians have been basically running that. Okay, that end of that. Yep. That shouldn't be a problem. Especially when the waiver is pretty small. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll go that frontier. <laughs> yeah, not a question, but a statement. I think uh, the cooling cooling function is very important, uh, especially given the increase in temperature over the summers as a possible cooling spot for citizens of Waverly who may be in distress and need a cooling place to go to. And this would be a good application for that. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, Dan isn't here to explain this, so I'm going to ask it anyway. 54000 for the electrical upgrade, and then there's installation of mini split heat pumps for 63000 That's for twenty five. The, the electrical upgrade will cover all the future mini splits, not just this phase. Right. Right. And but then the fifty-five thousand, which is phase two. Do you do we need to appropriate that money this year, or is that is for next year? Next year. So next kind of, year. So we're kind of showing you the next steps. I should okay. Right, should we be not have the money next year? You say you know what your phase two is going to have to hold into the year, so only half your building is going to be done for a while right. as of whatever. Okay. You're not tied in. Yep. To any contract moving yep. forward, doing that. It's just we're breaking the phases because one big bill that we I mean, understand the school can't take that. Right, budget. right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, because that's like a difficult 26. Okay, 26. 26. 26. 50. Um, what is the maintenance plan for these to maintain all these mini splits? I have jam on a preventive maintenance program. Okay, yep. is that those, spot spot those, are, are, coming coming? those are but that's built into your. Yearly costs of running the school. In house, we'll do the filters. Okay. We're getting in and cleaning and rinsing the coils. That's okay. going to be part of our preventive maintenance. And balancing. Right. 
Yeah, balancing. Yeah, balancing. The flooring replacement, pre-kindergarten restrooms, we looked at that with you, and that's something that's got to be done no matter what. And exterior doors, same thing. Yeah. You got, I think it's three. Yep. Yeah. yeah, times three. And, you know, same thing. That's no brainer. They got to be done. Yeah. So it was eye opening. Yeah. We do not have it on here, but what is the cost to clean the ductworks? Um, you know, oh, right. It says to me in an email. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, thirty-five bucks. Thirty-five. Yep. It's actually thirty-four and change. I need to go around. Okay. But I also, um, I also had it. If it matters, I also had it priced in phases. Yeah, I sent that. I did send an email. Okay. Okay. We we can't get that broken down. Into, we have broken down to five, up to five phases because there's five separate lines. Did you send that this year or last year? I sent it like a week. Okay. I'll look forward to it. So the 35 is all inclusive for everything? Yeah. Yeah. We get any kind of art of money, we do it. It's okay. Good job. But that's something we will address with the school committee. We I suppose you would be involved, but well, seeing how it's not here, Trish. Um, does the school committee have to make another request? Well, it didn't get submitted. Did you? You didn't submit your capital planning, did you? No. But the, 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 no. Yeah, it was, was not a not our first round. It, it has to go to capital planning. That's what your process states. However, we have to commit the ARPA funds by December thirtieth, so it could be entertained as a request because somebody raised it as a possible use. Oh, yeah, I know. I'm being facetious. <laughs> Waiting to see, Jamie. Um, okay. And so we're Lynn and I are carrying it okay. on the ARPA list, which I think the select board is going to start looking at on the fourth. Okay. Okay. All righty. Well, that's and I have your original email. Yep. Do you have a question? Have we looked into powering the heat pumps with solar? Because there's probably significant rebates on solar, and we have a lot of room out there to put collectors. So, it would, and it would be a good demonstration of solar power being used for the students to see, hey, this is cool, and it powers our systems as a sort of demonstration. So, I in the got, yeah, got, I mean, think longer range, you can look at that. You, you that roof from that building is going to be replaced soon. Right. And so, and is it facing the right direction? It's a big yeah, spot. Yeah, place. You might do some right. tree work and such, yeah. but if you put a quality roof on that, we have time to put that. I don't know if we have the engineering and all this stuff, but long term planning, I don't want to tear like Yeah. Is there any other solar in the district? Um, the town of Sunderland put that solar field next to the school. The town owns that solar field oh, okay. just to offset um, costs the town through uh, their energy use. But not strictly the school. No. I mean, they, it offsets the schools. Right. It belongs to the town. Right. They offset our energy budget with that. It kind of goes to the town. We send them the energy bill. Yeah. Um, but that's the only one that has. There's a lot of talk from all the towns that they want to do it. You know, yeah. And again, the Airfield Energy Committee is looking at that. The roof's there and that's important. Right. Here's got flat roofs with a big roof project coming. So instead, one could happen before the other. Yep. Uh, so maybe we should start looking at that. Maybe. So we, had, we don't need a rooftop installation. So we had a brief, okay. brief discussion last time, and I know right. Mar walked in because the roof is in really poor shape and needs to be replaced soon. Mm -hmm. uh, so can you just expand on that a little bit? Sure, even in the next few years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, Duckworth, ARPA funds. Okay. Request. Um, request. 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 Okay. Nice. We're looking at the electrical one phase right now um, for this budget and obviously the flooring and all those other things. Okay, well, so as you can see, this is a process and just because it goes through planning committees or these other committees, at the end of the day, all these questions we resurface because they may have the answers to those may have been lost in the ether. So, 
you know, we've got to bring them back up. Um, so, okay. I would just add one thing. Yep. We have an election coming up in November, and I'm concerned that federal funding for energy conservation may be at jeopardy depending on the outcome of that election. So I would urge uh, uh, very sooner than later planning, right? And assuming that we may not be eligible for the kind of funding we're eligible for right now. You know, I don't know if there are sources through federal that state. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you're going to trickle down effect either way, right? Um, but yeah, we should try to find out behind the scenes where that yeah, it's a ever source. Okay. So this is an ever source rebate, and they're obviously not going away. Okay. Do you have any questions for us? Do, is there a timeline here that I mean, obviously we have a timeline. We have to put this, um, you know, into black and white and make this happen. But right. No, I mean, if, if funding is able to go through, we obviously have to do the power upgrade first, and so yeah. we can get done during the summer. Okay. And we can, likely, given the timeline of things. Is summer realistic on the beach back if that was if the power oh, that's not on when we get the answer you know, it, we'll figure it out yeah. okay um Ready. in terms of like who's who's specifying and designing it what equipment we're getting and the level of quality of equipment how is that all being handled yeah Brian, we're using primarily taking equipment everywhere so. okay okay i just want to do public bidding you get the minimum that meets the stack so I don't want to jump equipment. Right. I mean, because it's under hundred thousand dollars, it won't we can go we don't have to go out to a blind bid on that. Yep. And so you know, we can control that. Even if you do go out the bid, you can write the specs to a model. Okay. Just have like for other projects, you know, you hundred thousand. You can write if you want to join your tractor, yeah. you can put the specs in there only John Deere. Okay. You know what I mean? So yep. we're very close there too. You know, okay. so we've already got seven takens in the building. Okay. So you know, I mean, yeah, good. Good. Okay. Okay. And I guess just moving forward, you know, this ductwork thing is upsetting because I don't think any of us knew that it hadn't been done ever. So we have the kids here, there, um, having to live in that environment. And I hear you saying that, but I don't think, I mean, I'm not a ductwork specialist, but you know, material in ducts settles and it's not like it's continually flying out. You know, I mean, you're, you're, you're filtering that through. I mean, it's good to imagine better to have ducts cleaned, yeah. but at each building you're in, it's got settled material in its duct systems. So I don't want to, when you make statements like that, I don't want to start having a fear out there that we have an unsafe air quality. You know, we might do an air quality test to see what is flying through. You know, we can do that, but. You know, it's just you know, you know, duct maintenance is yeah is subject to the person who you know the priority of the person looking at it. And so, you, as you know, we've had many requests, and usually it's education program is going to come first. I mean, unfortunately, yeah. that's you know. So I don't. I just want to make sure that we're not sending a fear out there. Mm -hmm. that when's the last time these ducts? You know well, I mean? if I may, I would certainly opt for. Uh, changing the filters on a regular basis. That's I'm done. sure that that's done, right? And that's more important than cleaning the ducts. I mean, it shouldn't be a priority and then clean the ducts. Yeah. But make sure the air flowing through there is going through filters. Yeah, we're on a regular schedule. Yeah, with the MER 13th. So, so you were know, the say, you said did work at Mohawk Regional, and the ducts were so bad and so obstructed that that's why they needed to see the building because they had never been done. Wow, it was horrible. And, um, you get a pollen this time of year, goes in there, and sticks the side of the duck, and 34 years of that, and you get some breathing, breathing on top of that. So it's pretty much. Okay. How can we get the wheels in motion to do an air quality test so that we know that the air is safe? An air quality test at the school? At the school. Um, I don't know who you would, I know, I don't know who would do it. I don't know who would pay for it. I don't know if it has to come in on the budget. Um, um, I don't know if that's, we can take that from some other source. Um, Darius, has it been done in any other school? No, we've done air, on the quality with this card, we did air flow yeah, checks, air, yeah. air exchange rates during COVID to make sure that they're up at par. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what we did a lot of uh, belts and replacement of motors and stuff to be sure that the, 
exchange per room was per hour was up to, up to speed. Um, so, you know, if we're moving forward with the cleaning, I and mean, I think we're moving forward with cleaning, the yeah. money on the testing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If for some reason the cleaning doesn't happen, then I think I'm with you. And that would give, yes. that would give another um, impetus towards the cleaning process. So let's see if that can go through. We don't vote on this tonight. We wait till uh, the end, and then we look at our tax rate, and then we look at numbers, and we look at the rate of rise of that tax rate uh, from over, over the last five years and project how that might go out. And then at that point, we make a decision which things get green light and which things may have to wait. So that's... We'll do our best, but we'll do our best. Obviously, we see that this is a uh, more of a priority than what we had um, thought. So, thank you very much for coming in. Right, uh, I know you're busy, so um, but this helps out. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I promised JP he'd be up for it. And uh, this, is, this is as far as we can take it. I'll take it. Okay. Um, I, will, I will take it. How's your dad doing? Um, he's doing better. Um, um, he's feeling a lot better. Um, yep. A little stronger. It looks better. So okay. Hopefully, we uh, Good. get him back into the great town of Wheeling. He's so, still grumpy. Was here by the day. Oh, that's, he, uh, <laughs> he's, he's, he's here in spirit. Uh, so, uh, absolutely. Uh, so okay, I, so let's talk about um, you know the bottles, uh, the packs, and uh, where where things are at this point. Sure, there's there's a few things I'd like to clarify. Yeah. Um, the past week has been a little bit chaotic. Um, and I know initially I'd said that I did not plan on being here because I planned on being in DC as part of a delegation of uh, fire chiefs from Western Mass um, mm -hmm. to lobby for uh, funding for several projects. Mm -hmm. um, I canceled that trip uh, because of things going on here at home. Um, but that does give me a chance to speak in person um, to some of the points that uh, I had replied to uh, Tricia. She had a couple questions that I think um, reflected some of the committee's questions, but also her, her questions. So I'm just going to read the email. And unfortunately, this email has been sitting in my outbox since the day that Tricia sent me a question about a follow up to the email I sent her. So it's been in there since uh, the afternoon of the 25th. <laughs> <laughs> Should be in your inbox right now. I just now. got it. <laughs> now you're quite um, So Trisha had asked um, how many packs do we need in total and whether a um, half and half purchase over two years would be feasible. Um, I will start off by answering the, the real easy questions and we'll get into some of the other questions. Um, she also wanted to know how many times we've applied for the AFG grant and whether we have an uh, active application out this year. Um, we're looking for 15 air packs. That gives us one pack for each seated position in our fire vehicles, which is something that we um, should have for our NFPA compliance, but also for the town's ISO ratings. It's one of the things that, that gives us, um, makes the fire truck a fire truck is having the, the equipment on it. Um, so we're looking at 15 packs. Um, this will be the third time that I'm applying for the grant. It's a very competitive grant. I know many people that have had success um, in getting air packs. I've had them re review the grant, look it over, look over it with me, um, and I've gotten some feedback from them. Everybody says that they they're very confident. They think it's a very well written grant. But um, this past year, I was able to get some feedback from the uh, peer review folks at the uh, that um, score the grants and find some of the areas that. That we didn't score great on and try and tweak those to, to get those to get everything as high as we could. But overall, we've scored very well on the grant in the last two years. Um, so I am applying for the grant again. We should know um, in theory by late September whether or not we've been awarded the grant or not, because the federal government needs to close their folks on, on the grant by then. Um, 
The good news, I think, as I mentioned earlier, is that the cost of the packs was a little bit lower than what I put on capital because last year they gave us a higher number, anticipating a higher price increase than we actually saw this year. I think the actual um, number that I gave you, Trisha, in the in the in the quote there was uh, 183,000 or something to that effect. So a little bit, a little bit lower than we were looking at. Is it in that? What's your number? We're carrying 202. Yeah, I think it's it's lower than that, um, but but I still don't know. You know, when the packs come in, whether there's by the time we get around to ordering them, whether um, there's going to be another 10, 15 percent increase or not. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a safe number to keep the um, appropriation at at the moment. Um, the um, whether or not we can split this up over two years, there's a few reasons why that's just not. Feasible. Um, one of them is a safety consideration because the operation of the two packs, despite the fact they kind of look similar, it's a mask goes on your face with an air bottle. Um, if we switch from one brand to another, the interface is going to be completely different. <clears throat> the way that the mask um, flips into your um, your air breathing hose and everything else, so it's going to be total different muscle memory. One of the other reasons is that all of our firefighters have their own masks. Um, for several reasons. One of them is for cleanliness, like you don't want to be breathing in somebody else's stuff so you get sick from his um, his germs, but also um, there is a, uh, that way they carry their mask with their gear and they have their own fit because they're different sizes. If we had two different brands of packs, everybody would have two different masks and depend on which fire trucks are on. So logistically, even the mounts in the trucks will be different the way that the big bottle versus the small bottle. Um, so Realistically, that's not not a great idea uh, for us. If we were funded partially this year, I would just buy some of the packs and then wait to implement them until we had all of them. Um, so one of the things that I am comfortable doing um, at this time, and, and uh, it might be a, a good idea, I think we we uh, may have been done in the past, is just to, if we have this money allocated. Um, and set aside and and um, if we need it, it's there. But I'm I feel confident that this is that we we still have a good shot at this grant, and mm -hmm. I'm willing to give it one more one more try and see okay. what happens. Yep. Um, but I'll let you speak. Well, to that. I don't know how that grant process works, but yep. others, if if you don't have the funding, mm -hmm. then then you end up getting the grant, uh, or they'll only give you the grant if the town backs it up with their own funds. So I don't know. Yeah, um, there's a five percent match, which um, is not really. I don't think it's really going to be significant for us. I could absorb that in our budget because mm -hmm. it's it's honestly um, the amount of money we would be spending on replacing bottles, you know, to be to maintain compliance. I'm not so worried about the five percent. <laughs> So, Jimmy, do you have to buy additional bottles like you just said to go with this for spares? Yeah, that 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 quote was covers the whole the whole. That's fifteen cost. packs plus how many bottles? Fifteen spares. So there's thirty bottles. Thirty thirty bottles, fifteen okay. packs, but one pack according to the uh, NFPA um, and according to the AFG grant, one pack <clears throat> is you know a bottle. The mask is one. The yeah. whole the whole unit. Okay. okay. Um, so moving forward, if we were to earmark funds and put them aside and the grant came through, obviously that money would go back into the general fund or um, some other place. But um, And if you do not get the grant, then we can go back and Try to access those funds. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I appreciate that you you recognize that it's a priority. You know, then we've we've you know that we I think we've squeezed just about all the life we, we can get out of these things. Yeah. Your demonstration. Yeah. It's uh it's something every town has the same packs or no. There's <clears throat> the majority of the towns surrounding us, I think 16 of our surrounding communities have one particular brand of pack. Um, and more importantly, they have one pressure that those bottles are operating on. Our bottles are bigger, but they operate at a lower pressure, 
which makes it difficult for us to fill our bottles. If there was a large incident, let's say we had an air truck there that's filling bottles for people, they have to change the regulator settings to lower it. And we can't fill ours alongside of somebody else's. Um, there's also the risk if somebody's not um, being diligent when they're filling them and it's mixed in with a batch of somebody else's bottles that they'll get overfilled, in which case there's a disc inside that will blow out to prevent the, the bottle from failing. But then that bottle's out of service, that bottle has to get sent back to be repaired. So logistically, it makes sense for everybody, even if it's not the same brand of pack, to have the same pressure of the bottle. Um, we would, there's a strong likelihood we would probably go with the same brand of pack as, as other communities, just so that we have better interoperability. Um, but the standard, the NFPA standard, is it keeps moving more and more towards interoperability for different sort of brands of packs. So that's no longer not as much of an issue as it's been in the past. I was I was just wondering if it had ever been thought of forming a sort of buyers co-op among all the towns to get the same equipment for a you know, greater volume for a lower price for like Franklin County town twenty seven towns. Four towns. I would say. Yeah, we yeah, can do they, it for, yeah, for, for some of that. Fire. Um, unfortunately, most of the surrounding towns had already replaced their packs, and a lot right. of them on a regional grant, um, I think uh, five or six years ago, uh, which is when they all went to this other particular brand. So there was, um, there, I think that's where some of the, um, the that's why a lot of the surrounding communities have the same brand is because a lot of people made the move. Well, that's good. Yeah, a little, a little while back. Sorry, we did. <laughs> are, are there any further questions, JP, regarding <clears throat> the air packs? Um, I think we've. I think you've answered. All right. All the questions. Feel free to reach out if you have any more questions, and uh, okay. I will make sure that the email gets out of the. Uh, a box and yeah. into the, uh, the inbox. We do need an exact number though. On um, for the air pack. On the quote? Yeah. Yes, it's that's Did so it's you the go one the two option. <clears throat> well the I I um I have the quote that I sent to Trisha. It's in his out of box. It's in my <laughs> box. <laughs> Everybody's been sending me stuff that the show. Here on the 25th. I didn't know that. <laughs> Is it the one you just sent me? Yeah. All right. Hold on. I'm going to X out of the analysis. Um, that is the quote that I'm using for the grant um, that we've applied to. Okay. Okay. Oh. I don't know what format you sent it in, but it's not letting me open. All right, I'll get that taken care of by the time we're done here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll be very, thank you. Right. Thanks for coming thank in. Thank you, Jimmy. Yeah. No, no, thank you. Okay. okay. Um, we're going to leapfrog the water department because they are not here. And we're going to move to. Police cruiser, capital request, Chief Savini. 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 I also do a lot of things. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so the capital request, as we have it, um, we'll find it. No, it's the name isn't. We were confused. What? We were confused. It's under priority B is called last one. Priority B. Uh, yeah. Last one. It's like 2017 on my. Oh. Yeah. It's an old. I got. This is what we got. 16. So this is the. Uh, so the. Replace the 2017 unmarked cruiser, and the request is for sixty five thousand dollars. Okay, yes. so I know we touched on this before, mm -hmm. but <clears throat> kind of need to bring it back into focus. Okay. Um, um, so tell us again, and we apologize for having you know, you people so, Okay, <laughs> but tell us again why we need this particular cruiser at this particular time. Okay. 
So, um, where to start? So currently, just so everybody's aware, currently we have operating a 2017 cruiser. That's the unmarked car. Uh, 2017 cruiser. We just got a 2023 that we were supposed to get two years ago to replace the 2018. Um, so those three cars we currently have. I, I'm, I'm so the 17 unmarked is your car. That's one that you. That's the one that I primarily. And there's the detail car. No, no, that's the same one. That's that's a different. That's, that's today. That's a same. Oh, okay, and then there's two other Mark cruisers. So there's there's for the Ford Explorers. There's three of them right three, now. Three Explorers right now. Okay. Yeah. So typically in the past, what we've done is if I replace a cruiser, I take the oldest cruiser that's the one that got replaced, and we make that the detail car. Okay. <clears throat> and when I say detail car, we use that to go to training. We use that as a detail car to sit on the road or doing yeah. traffic as a vendor requests a cruiser. We get paid when that car gets used. So we get $10 an hour to use that car. Yeah. So that's why we keep the detail car. There's no expense coming out of the budget to repair that car. We get paid to use that car. So that's why. Jim, does, does the revenue from the paying for that car come the cost of that car and operate for the year? Yes. It does. Okay. Yep. It does. Um, so that's the, the current sedan that we have now. That's. So if you look, drive by the station, you'll see that there's four things. You know, the sedan's not being used right now because that's old, old. It needs repairs. It needs tie rods. So that's been sitting. That's That car is going to be sold off or traded in for a new one if, if we go forward with it anymore. Uh, if that car, <clears throat> once we get rid of that car, the 2018 car would then become the detail car. So it wouldn't be a frontline cruiser. It would just be used for details or for going to training, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so what I'm looking to do is keep the 2017 car that we have, which is the unmarked car. Uh, that car currently has almost 66,000 miles on it. It is a 2017, but it's been primarily used by me. So the mileage has been kept down. I think we could get another couple of years out of that car if we keep it. Uh, instead of replacing, using the language of replacing the 2017, use the funds that we were going to use to replace the 2017, purchase another cruiser, keep the 2017, and then we'll have three frontline cruisers. So the 2018 that's marked right now, what's the condition of that car? That car has got 166, 165,000 miles on it. Um, that's the car that we we sunk an extra four thousand dollars into which is why i've gone over budget on the cruiser cruiser repairs um for the water pump um some ball joints you know suspension issues um just to keep that going because we didn't have the other car yet so but that's since our, we got the new car that one we haven't sunk any money into that so that 18 is due for replacement if you're going to take that and make that the detail car and trade in the existing detail car correct okay yes so that so that we're all on the same page. And we've got the what the fleet looks like. Okay. So it's a built fleet of we need we need the a picture of the fleet. 2017 unmarked 66 K. Correct. 2018, yes. 2018 cruiser. Yeah, fully marked. 165. Yeah. After yes. that, you, we have what? A 2020 2023 hybrid. Yeah. That's when we just took ownership of within the last couple of months. Okay, so that's okay. Which has been budgeted for two years. Yep. Yeah. So we're all good. The 17, 18, 23. Is there another one hiding up there? <laughs> just the bicycle. And and the detail. Yeah, that's the sedan. Yeah. Okay. And what year is that again? The sedan? <laughs> yeah. the, uh, you know what they yeah. It's yeah, it's and that's got close to 170,000. We know this. Okay. It bumps when you turn the wheel. It's not safe to drive other than okay. drive into a detail, park it, and have some lights. All <laughs> right. Okay. And um, in any given day, how many operators do you have that will be manning, sitting be behind the wheel? Of these vehicles, so we're up to three. That's that's why I'm looking for the third car. 
Okay. Yeah, but they never all work at once, Jeff. They do. They do. They do? Yep. I haven't seen them. Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I overlap with somebody during the day. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So that's two cars being used. And then we have the addition of the CSO, the clinician <coughs> CSO shift, which is grant funded. So that's one shift. It's usually a Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. Um, so they'll be they'll be patrolling the town on that day, that, that CSO shift day. So that's it could potentially be used for three three cars being used in one day. Mm -hmm. And to use so one car, we're just we're just in a position now where just having like, two cars, even if it's an you know, officer taking a cruiser to train, like yeah. we, we don't have something because we have two other ships mm -hmm. that are happening at that point, or three other ships. We have three ships and a detail car. Then okay. if something else came up with detail, you could use that car. Yeah. If we're using the third car that we have for detail, now we only have two cars to use. There's been plenty of times, plenty of plenty of uh, events where we've had multiple people, more than we've had three cars plus a detail car plus additional officers mm -hmm. uh, on some of these events. Things have, things have gotten busier. I know it's a small town. I was going to say, this is mind-boggling and overkill to me. <clears throat> Just, yeah. Go ahead. Um, so as it sits right now, we have one new cruiser that's in great shape. Correct. We have um, your the vehicle that you use mm -hmm. unmarked as sixty six K. Yes. Which which is seventeen, which generally speaking means you put on about forty miles a day. That's all right. Yeah. Somewhere in some, average, somewhere. Yeah. I mean, just you know, I don't yeah. know when we got in seventeen. I already did. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so that's um, okay. And is that car ever used for anything else other than for your to transport you from point A to point B? If if another car is needed, yes, that, that car will be taken. Okay, yeah. we've used it for. Uh, traffic detail, the traffic ships, we use it for CSO ships, we use it for... So for what traffic. year do you feel this, if this new car would have come to fruition, what year would that be, a 25 or 26 or... Right now, 2023. 2023. There's one left on the lot that they're willing to hold until we decide within the next few weeks. And it's, a hybrid, right? it's a hybrid car. Okay. So like Ford is pushed for the electric car. There is no electric car that we could use, so we've set up for the hybrid. The hybrids are more yep. expensive. Um, we could get gas cars anytime. You yep. want a hybrid car? There's one left on the lot that they're willing to hold. When do you think that'll be gone? When do I think it'll be gone? Yeah. We mean gone. I mean, like they're holding. I mean, they're holding it for us yes. specifically. Yes. Oh. Until I tell them, yeah, we're not going forward, or yes, yes we are going forward. Okay. Um, but once that, like we talked about before, once that goes, yeah, they're not making 2024s. They pulled back to 2024s. The 2025 models will roll out in December of 2024. They're already anticipating. Ford's already anticipating that they're not going to be making 2025s. So if we want a hybrid, yeah. this is the one car that we yeah. have the opportunity to get. If okay. we get a gas car, we can we can get gas any. What, uh, do you have any idea what similarly sized communities around us, what their fleet looks like, like Conway or Williamsburg? Well, I'm here. here, here, I'm here, here, here. I, think, I think Sunderland. Maybe, maybe Sunderland, Sunderland. yeah. yeah Sun, Sunderland, I think they got five cars plus one. Like we have the, the extra for the details, so they've got six cars. Wow. Um, Deerfield has eight or nine. I think they've got a couple of task force vehicles as well. What about like like Conway or Alexander? Conway's got one, but they're looking for a second one this year. Um, but they would, I mean, they have the full time chief, yeah. and they cover a, a third of the less than a third of the hours that we cover, and they do less than a third of the amount of call volume that, that we have as well. And they don't have the additional ships, they're not putting out the CSO ships or the clinician ships. Um, they don't have two people on at the same time. So there's many differences. I, I don't think Conway's a fair comparison. Okay. Hatfield, Hatfield's got four cars. Uh, they're looking for a new one this year. So they're they're right next door. Mm -hmm. It's I mean, 
I know it sounds it sounds confusing. It sounds like a lot, but it really it's adding one car to the fleet. That's that's all we're doing. We're not adding multiple cars. We're just we're adding one car to the fleet that we have. So right, you're adding you're probably, probably getting rid of something. I'm sorry. The net after you trade the sedan, you're still yeah, adding four. Yeah, three three frontline cars and a detail car. I don't count the detail car because we get paid to use that. Yeah. The other three we don't get paid. There was a comment or a question made at the last meeting about its requirement that we have an unmarked car, correct? Yes. Yeah, for juvenile that? transports, that's that's the main thing with, with the police reform. Juveniles can't be transported in a in a uh, marked police cruiser. Um, thankfully we don't arrest too many juveniles, so we don't have to so Conway use it that often. They're going to have one, if they get a second one, they're going to have an unmarked and a mark. Yeah, so right now, there, there's this currently unmarked. Okay. And the third thing, every, every town of Sunderland, Hatfield, Conway, Williamsburg, they all have an unmarked. For that purpose. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. And just to add one more point to it, yeah. um, the grants that have come available, because we're looking at 60, I got the quote dated the 29th, it's 64,000 and change, 64,800. Um, so I just got that quote. Um, so looking at that that number, in addition to that, there's grant funds that we've applied for to get additional repeaters, um, additional equipment for the cruisers. So that's an extra $20,000 that we're not having to, to come to the town and say, hey, I need a repeater, that's 13,000. I need a new computer, that's another 5,000. We've already got those. We've already purchased those on grants. So essentially, you have the funds to equip this car once you get it. Yes, okay. we have the equipment. Um, the only thing that would be in the quote would be the lights, sirens, cage, you know, the standard things that go into the cruiser. But radios, we have radio, we have repeater, we have computers, we have um, all the things that, that we would need to purchase normally, which is an extra $25,000 worth of equipment. We wouldn't have to. Are there any other questions regarding purchase of a new police cruiser? Anybody? Comments? And depending on depending on what they give us, I mean the sedan is probably not worth too too much. If they give us a hundred dollars, they give us a thousand. I don't I don't know. So that could reduce right. So we could use yeah, that trade offset to get another piece of equipment. Oh, I have one more question, but it's not about the cars. The other day, I saw uh, three state police cruisers roll by my house, and you know that little island we have up there. They went around the island, then they went down Weber Road somewhere. I've never seen three state police cars cruising around my house. I don't know if it, 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 some it, it wasn't your house. And they they went past the house that they were looking to go to, and then turned around for. Oh, that's what. Yeah, was. okay. So they were responding to. But if you see them again, <laughs> it got me a little nervous. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Right. That it helps us a great deal when when we go to the vote. Excellent. Thank, thank you. Thanks, Joe. Thanks. All right. Okay. Um, what is not here? And while we're on the subject of. Vehicles. I guess we move to highway department pickup truck and staff wage adjustments. Have the arm. Better every day, but still got a ways to go. Oh, <laughs> you want to. so. Where do you want to start? Well, let's start with the uh, let's start with the pickup truck again. And uh, sure. And what I can tell you that I had looked into, I I took the the elect electrification vehicle study that Western Sanford did for the final weight and I I pulled the numbers out of that study that was recently done <laughs> as far as the operating expense of gas, hybrid, and electric. In their report, they reported that a gas vehicle to operate is 0.42 cents per mile. A hybrid is 0.37 cents per mile. An electric is 0.28 cents per mile to operate. 
Okay. Mm. So I then took the present 2013 F 150 and I averaged 8,000 miles per year on it. <clears throat> so calculating that mileage at 8,000 times the 0 0.42 for a gas engine. And then I multiply, that comes out to $3,360 per year. And if we put a 15 year life expectancy on it, the operating expense over that 15 years is 50,400. Doing the same thing with the hybrid at 37 cents per mile, the 8,000 miles per year comes out to a cost of $2,960 per year. Multiplying that times the 15 year life expectancy comes out to 44,400. And lastly, doing the calculations on the electric at that same mileage comes out to $2,240 per year times a 15 year lifespan comes up to an operating expense of 33,600. So the hybrid over the 15 years will cost $10,800 more to operate. However, presently, the hybrid, I mean the electric car, electric truck is $20,000 more than the hybrid. So over the 15 years, the hybrid will, will save us money because it's going to be um, about a net loss of $10,000 if we went with the electric. And that doesn't even consider expense for a charging station, charging station or two or two, whatever. That, that's just the operating expense. Well, yeah. if we had something different as far as maybe putting on an extreme high amount of miles, maybe those numbers would be different. But at the present time, mm. we don't have high mileage. Yeah. What, what about um, operating costs also includes maintenance on the engine and whatnot? And, uh, with, the, with, the, with the mileage that we put on in the other than doing an oil change, things of that nature. We're, we'll never need to do, should never, pretty much never need to do a tune up, no plugs, because you go 80, 90,000 easily on a set of plugs, and that's where we're at. Not much more than that. So it really, we're not, we don't, I have not, with the current, I've had a lot of it, uh, expenses as far as. Things of that nature. Oh, okay. Transmission's original. Nothing's been done to the great. I'm going to knock on wood and we probably it's gonna have push the ball. But the, you know, presently, it's just breaks. Things of that nature. Now, another thing that I also question is an electric vehicle. The government mandates they do an eight-year warranty on the battery. Mm -hmm. We want to try to get 15 years out of it, which is what we've been asking of our previous pickups. And the battery goes to heck and doesn't work in 12 years. Now we're left with so, well, nothing. <clears throat> so again, I think the electric might be better if we were running high mileage and had a shorter turnaround, meaning only trying to get eight or 10 years out of it. If Whaley wants to step up and start buying and pickups more frequently, well, then we can look at that. But I'm just telling you, based on history, I have not been able to, to get much. There was a time many years ago where the pickups were being replaced on a, maybe an eight to 10 year cycle, but that's because Rust was a horrendous back there mm. back in the 70s. Right. You know, it's things have changed. Sure. The vehicles last as far as being able to not rust out, things last longer. Yeah. But um <clears throat> now another thing that I don't know what's gonna come out of this with the select board, but the cemetery department was told last year when this pickup was originally put on the 
discussion last year, they wanted to, they asked if they could have the old pickup just to move their lawnmowers around the way, their landscaping trailer. Yep. We obviously tabled it last year, it didn't purchase it. They've already asked how they're going to move their mower this year. I don't have an answer for them because we don't have the vehicle. So I'm not sure what they're going to do because the commissioner Darcy's used to have a, a vehicle with a tow hitch on, now she doesn't. No, she doesn't. Um, so okay. what do you have for the old water department trucks? Do you still have any of those? Just the one. And see, so we have the we have the two pickups, the one I drive primarily and the old water department truck. And so there are many cases where you know, like they're out mowing on a great like, nice day. It's the same day cemetery is going to want to mow. No one wants to mow on a rainy day. So, um, you know, those are the scenarios we're up, we're up against. Would, you've always had a half ton. If you went to a three quarter ton truck with a snow plow on it, would that operationally make the bigger trucks last longer? If you could, most towns around us, they have. We don't have any small trucks. No one would be using it. You don't have enough people with people would, would sit and not be. Not, we don't. We can use it. Okay. We don't need a file on it. You got because we only have three three big trucks and the five fifty. We only have five, five, five. And four trucks and four drivers to cover the whole town. So that's why there's no benefit to have the file on this truck. Okay. It doesn't. It wouldn't be used. No. Do you need four wheel drive? Yeah, it, it's trust me when there's trying to move around in the winter time when we used to have a two wheel drive, the the few thousand dollar upcharge to go to four wheel drive is is well worth it. Um, you don't really save that much money. Yeah. Well, look, we're not going to make the determination of which vehicle you yeah. want. So. Well, I, all this information is good. Yep. Yeah. Tell us which uh, I feel you're you're going to go for. That the the hybrid will serve our needs, and I'm more confident that it will serve our needs for 15 years. Where I'm not so sure about the electric. EV will last 15 years. Okay. Now you got 85,000 in here, and the one I'm looking at to replace the pickup. Yep. Yeah. That's now, hybrid. It was submitted. That the, the hybrid, I, I told you, I think two weeks or last time I was in here, we could drop that down safely, probably 65, but I think we should say 66. So $19,000 less, but it may end up being 20,000 when it actually comes through. What I don't know is, again, the, the year of things. That, yeah. That's what really. Um, I mean, as it is, we we ordered the the F five fifty eons ago, and at the moment, I have I have a VIN number, which is a good thing. Um, I've been told recently when I checked on it that it, we should see delivery in sometime in June. It, but them, them receiving the cabin chassis so that it'll get updated this summer. We will have it this summer. Um, wow! So. So he's been it, it's it is a it's good it's a unique situation that with municipal vehicle you know let me say it this way the, the amount of trucks available isn't what it used to be so when a dealer or even a local dealer can get a vehicle in here they just assume sell it to a private contract or someone who's going to pay the landscape or some higher they're not premium. Gonna, they don't want to bid it and, and sell it for a fraction sure. over their cost. They yeah. want to make a lot of money off it. So sure. they don't hmm. there's just not a lot of vehicles that are mm -hmm. sitting out there. They are getting what's that? I'm getting rebate offers all the time from Ford right now. Whereas I wasn't getting any of the last well, two years, but now they they've softened up a little off the second. Yeah, I mean the MSRP was was just yeah, used and to they, be, they you never even thought about paying the MSRP. And then yeah, after yeah. COVID, they, they you couldn't add even, it on to you, it. You, you, you were paying it. on top of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And see, like when we go out to bid, it's not it's still below MSRP. So why would a local, a local company want to sell it at a loss? Exactly. 
Okay. So um, and just a um, couple things about yep. the thing. Um, okay. We do have a resiliency and an energy plan in town. So, and part of that plan, Selby is recommending that keep get the hybrid. Okay. Um, so that's one door closed. Mm -hmm. But you continue to have this chicken and egg discussion about electricity, electric vehicles, yep. where it's moot until you get some charging stations in here. Exactly. So, um, and that's a discussion with the select board that, mm -hmm. you know, the green communities will pay for that. I have a fair amount of experience with electric vehicles and charging mm -hmm. stations. We need to get some charging stations here. Mm -hmm. And then we can have a real discussion about electric vehicles because they do have really good uses for some municipal vehicles. I think they'd be ideal for the water department, you know, where there's discreet work, not leaving town, yeah. not heavy stuff, but, you know, I mean, everything I read. We probably needed a hybrid six months ago in this discussion. We don't have a charging station. So we can have much more meaningful discussions when we actually can point to a charging station or two. I, I, think, I think the meaningful discussions on electrical will come when we see the marketplace. Um, become more robust um, because right now everything you read says those batteries 10 years and that's it and when the batteries go you just might well just drive that thing into a hole so as he said you want yeah we want to get 12 15 years out of it 15 out of yeah it, so um so but if you're turning a vehicle over in less than 10 years and i mean Police different, cruisers or different. the type yeah. of work in yeah. a small town where yeah. your pickup is a workhorse for mm -hmm. throwing stuff in the trunk all the time. Yeah. But it yeah. does have for discrete uses. Mm -hmm. But again, yeah. we have no charging stations. So, so the charging it's a station point. point. Yeah, right. it's a move point. Yeah. The batteries are getting more efficient right. and they're recyclable. Right. And so. they're everywhere you go now. And yeah. you can't park mm -hmm. close anyplace because the charging stations. Right. So. Well, well, we just heard from the police that the plant that may that is making hybrid vehicles is switching over to gas didn't you didn't you say that um, yes I, I was going to ask Keith if there's any availability for hybrid trucks right now. yeah yeah and uh so i i think that's telling as to what the uh what the marketplace is jim that's the only supplier of police vehicles electric there's just one supplier. Well, not electric. They're hybrid. You know, there are there are no electric suppliers right now. The hybrid. There are some police uh, police forces that have electric vehicles. Yeah, those are administrative vehicles. They're not frontline cars. They're resource they're administrative officer. vehicles. They're oh awesome. well, they I don't make them dedicated frontline cruiser. I don't like to check right now. Source of where? Okay. First, okay. So that's we have a clear picture of yes on the truck. A clear picture on the cruiser. What did, is what's the availability? I mean, if, if I, we say July first that you can go out and get one, I mean there, there are some out there. Again, I will need to I have not checked every manufacturer. Right. I'm sure I we, we can find something. But yeah. they all make I, again it was one of those things I had said to somebody somewhere along. I, I wasn't going to like go out and spend yeah a tremendous amount of time and effort researching where I can find them if we're gonna say if we're gonna get an electric get an electric and then I wasted all my time yeah. to do that. Yeah. So that's why I'll, I'll definitely start looking deeper into the availability yeah. of a hybrid that will fit the needs. Yeah, it sounds like it makes sense. Okay. All right, let's wrap that. Yeah. Brenda, right. I'm sorry. Um, do you have any questions? I should have gotten I keep the screen's been frozen for a while. Glad She's frozen. So okay. All righty. So um part two um have the discussion regarding um wage adjustments. Um, that were brought to our attention at the last meeting. Um, we still have those, right, Trish? Yeah, we have. I have. Yeah.
Yeah, we'll take another coffee. I told you we had enough paper, but if you need them again. I, I have it here somewhere, but do you have a you want them all in? Okay. So um Where I can tell you where the I'm just gonna give you um Dick left all this well not all this but just all this extra teams if you make it yeah that that goes on yeah. top of after not now yeah exactly so he said Wanting to save it, <laughs> be careful. Wow, you never know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you never know who's listening. Yeah, okay, all right. all right. So let's um, staff wage adjustments. Um, so to summarize, you had voted the three percent cola, which that sheet that you got at our last meeting correct. reflects, yep. and there were. Um, eight positions uh, based on the salary re review by the personnel committee that need additional adjustments. Mm -hmm. yep. Police officer full and part time custodian and three positions in the highway department, along with the animal inspector, mm -hmm. which is going to be vacant June thirtieth, and the highway superintendent. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, so I guess the question. Thanks. Now, I, I was just, someone told me, I'm not sure who it was, that in Conway, maybe Trisha, that I don't know if it was Conway or another town, they were offering cola or adjustment, or whichever one was greater. Have you heard that? No, sir. No? Then, yeah. Then I guess it wasn't Conway, and it could be Conway because I may have been a dream. heard from most of the other towns when we did the survey. Yeah. You remember, I think you asked Conway didn't yeah. respond, yeah. or it could have been Hadfield, okay. but those are the two that didn't respond. Everybody else around us did. Mm -hmm. So you have um, you have increases. We have increases here of. Uh, you know, you got police officer full time rate uh, going up 1.14. Thanks, Jim, for doing, doing that. 1.14%. Uh, part time rate going up 0.7. Um, custodian 3.2. But then we get to three uh, positions where we have an 8.6 and 8.5%. In the highway. So you take that and you add the 3% cola on top of it. So you got three positions there running in somewhere around 11% increase in one year. Yes, what's that? I mean, again, again, what the factor we work with. And it's nothing. I mean, Brenda's representing the personal committee now, and Tom has in the past, and that is that we go through with the criteria that we've been using for years with the communities that are as equal to Waitley as possible, Western Mass. And we look at the positions. Like in the case of the highway department right now, the operator labor is almost 9% below the median in these other communities. And so that's why you're looking at that adjustment. Now, if you talk about doing adjustments and no, and or, or colas, the minute you don't do a cola, you fall behind again next year because all the other towns around that are doing a colas, you, you're ne you never can get to the average if you don't do the cola. <clears throat> and you, you always fall behind every year. And right next next year you'll be behind again. None of these, when we 
make adjustments. None of these are to say Waitley is the most highest paid employee in town. All we're doing is, and the, from the personnel committee standpoint, is just trying to bring the employee back to the average. So never has Waitley taken the stand, well, we're going to be the highest in Franklin County. We're not. And we never will be. We just try to stay in the middle. Mm -hmm. Um. So, okay. Questions? No. Brenda, are you there? I am. Okay. Um. Given that you have the, the uh, you were part of this committee, um, as a representative from the finance committee, um. You want to speak to these increases? Or do you feel Keith has pretty much summed it up? I, yeah, I endorse the increases and I endorse what Keith just said. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. I know the average thing is 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 important. Okay, we get it. People look at other towns and what are they making? They're doing the same job that I have. Um, they're making more. Um, that'll never end. Never end. Because that average just keeps going up and up and up. So it it, it again it falls to how comfortable those increases fit into the budget. So, but, so the fear is that you're going to lose people and you can't replace them or what? Or we have people who are so skilled that, that it, it makes sense to keep them and do whatever you can to do that. Okay. One of the things I can answer for you on the highway side of things is that knowing what's going on in our region, every town is struggling to get a qualified applicant, someone who meets your requirements when you advertise. Mm -hmm. At the same point in time, yes, once you have someone who has come to the town, you put in a ton of effort to train them, teach them what goes on in the town. They learn the town, get a little experience, and then off to the to a higher paying community. So, so that does warrant wanting to keep them because training, every time you have someone turn over every couple of years, you're losing a lot of money to train them. Cost money to train them. Mm -hmm. And so, When you bring in a new individual onto the highway department, okay, what would that starting salary be? Twenty-seven oh eight. It's going to be right now. It currently is at twenty-four ninety-four. But from the study that was done in the comparison towns, it would be twenty-seven oh eight to bring to the median average. Without a cola, twenty-seven oh eight, and that—that's in keeping with. And, and again, I know that there are towns around. Yes, that may not pay quite that much, but at the same point in time, towns just within five miles of us are paying that for starting soup. So when someone moves to this area and is a potential candidate, yeah. Why wouldn't they go to the one that's paying a couple bucks more an hour? If the opening's there, absolutely. Um, but there are other factors, but I get you. You know, I sure. From the, you know, I don't even know in this point in time, we're right obviously in the middle of our, our, our town administrator and what, about what the outcome of that is. Yeah. The select board, how much that's going to potentially get adjusted from what we're at. We don't know that either. That's and true. You may find that 
That's way over what? Is it? Yeah. There's no question. Do we, we have good people? Do we have any information about uh, comparative wages and median household income for towns? One of the things that I presented to the personnel committee this year is the report that was done for the town of Waitley Housing Committee this year. It's its current numbers was done actually was done in 2023. I don't know if we have we have that. Got got that. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. So we're gonna if, if you review that report, one of the things that's shocking to me yeah. is how much money does it cost to live in the town of Waitley? We all know, I mean, look at our property values and everything, but at some point in time, if we don't, if our employees don't stay in line, we're not going to have any employees that even think about to live in Waitley. Right. And, and at some point in time, certainly we have some elected officials that have to live in Waitley. Right. And if the elected officials that have to live in Waitley can't afford to live in Waitley, they're not going to, we're not going to have an elected official that would even That's take right. the job. That report. You have to keep that in mind. That was I hope. It is. It's it and really so, is. But again, that's a function of the marketplace. That's a function of the economy, and things change. I know, and I'm telling you that I present like in the high. I'll just keep comparing the highway department because that's what I have right at the top of my head. Of my three employees, other than myself. I have one employee that lives in Whaley, and now presently he's benefiting, he still lives with his parents. Should he move out on his own, he probably can't afford to live in Whaley. So what does that mean? If he still wants to work here, he's going to have to move away from it. When we have emergencies and we get on the phone and call, and they're half an hour, 45 minutes away to get here because they can't afford to live anywhere here. Yeah. Yep. Same thing with police officers. We're going to get to the point where I'll have no police officers living in Waitley. Yep. And when you have an emergency and you expect them here, and they... So... <clears throat> yeah. And how do you walk that fine line? You know, I, talk, agree. Yeah. I, I remember the chief the last meeting talking about the salaries for officers and how they may not be able to live in town and how towns like Wilbraham are, are offering so much more. But I guarantee you, those salaries don't allow those individuals to live in Wilbraham. So some of that has to, you know, you got to put that into context. Uh, I think everybody's looking for whatever fits them, what's ever best for them. And, um, I don't think, you know, in the long run, can we overcome the marketplace? Yeah. I don't know, but I think we'll have to take that into um, strong consideration. Um, and it looks now like, um, can we fund that everything, Trish? Uh, well, you have the analysis um, on the differential on this sheet right now. Yeah. I think um, I think the challenge for the wages here we have a finite group of employees, yep. um, full time especially, which uh, almost all of these employees are, and. Yep. Um, so it makes it stand out particularly more that a small group's affected. Mm -hmm. um, you have a process in place, I guess, for the, I don't know how long with the personnel committee reviews this, does the survey, looks at data. Mm -hmm. um, competition is competition is competition, I get that. Um, we do have a new town administrator and there will be a slight cost savings there. Um, that will reduce this number to about $5,000, if that's helpful. Um, 
due to some tough negotiation on some people's part. Yep. Um, but I mean, the difference between now and say 10 or 15 years ago is the licensing and the qualifications that have been put on us by the state have made it more and more difficult to find people from building inspectors to CDL with additional licenses to, um, you know, all the licenses that the water department was talking about last sure. week and the certifications that your treasurer and clerks need now. Um, that's the tough thing. We've become so much it more is. professionalized in local government right. that that's driven the expertise and the wages exponentially. Yeah. Um, it's just not, oh, you know, I'll go work in town hall when my kids go to school. It's yeah. changed tremendously. And I think that's a lot behind, yeah. you know, a decent wage. I think as especially my others, yeah. the scarcity of labor is incredible. I see it in my yeah. office. Yeah. Yeah. There's no one to get. Yeah. So we are paying over what we should be paying just to get very minimal. And so the money that these men take, they're the bottom. Like they, they work their butts off at this time. Like they're, I mean, they're not, their wages aren't keeping pace with what it costs to put food on the table. We're seeing things now like retention bonuses, signing bonuses. You never saw that in the public sector. Right. I mean, it's ridiculous because especially for fire and police now, paramedics, whatever, mm -hmm. ten thousand dollars <throat> just to sign. Yeah. Um it's it's really it's really a different sure. landscape now. You know, yep. it really is. I think generally speaking, um when we look at everything, you know, and we stratify the expenditures, um, you know, I think personnel certainly going to be up top. So that's that's what I can say. I mean, you know, outside of that, um, you know, we're not voting on this right now. Do we need to vote on this? No, no. Uh, well, the wages are in the budget, so when yep. you start to vote the individual line item, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, I think we can use our money for wage in class, so it will be on the list for the select there, yeah. which you'll eventually see. And we have some stabilization fund money that maybe can go towards vehicles, you know. Um, yeah, so, so um, yeah, you have all those big decisions to make right. now right. that your appointment's done. Say, so, right. um, just one question, personnel committee, did the water department come to you guys to talk about operator or no? No, no. And, and because the water commissioners are an elected board, yeah. we treat that department similar to a library, and that is um, we provide them the information that we obtain, and they have to make their own decisions. And so they. What they did was way after us last year and after Tom meeting it had nothing to do with it. Right. right. Okay. I'm good. You good? Everybody good? Brenda, any questions? No, thank you for asking. No. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so that's uh that's a wrap. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Full police department, thank you. Thank you. Um, and, uh, Wayne sent, it, sent an email saying he didn't know he was going to be on the agenda and was going to try, he couldn't make it, but was going to try to get a water commissioner to attend. I guess he couldn't. Okay. Um, well, we can just have a general discussion about that. Um, you know, the. Um, I asked for some black and white. On and this is what we got. Yeah, so we were told that the state of Massachusetts is mandating that a water commissioner be on no, oh, a superintendent. I mean, a superintendent uh, be on uh, 40 hours a week. And um, regardless of the amount of time, it really takes for you, regardless of the size of the system, apparently. Well, now right. Trish hunted this down on the mass website and it says they're saying 35 hours a week right? if i understand it correctly there's a lot there as you know but there is yeah. 
um, seven hour working shift each day for five days, that's 35. Yeah. yeah. Does Rome get overtime with a seat? Yeah, the flat rate. Right? As far as I know, he's flat rate. Right? So, but he works weekends. And he's not called 24 7 because he's going to tell you not call. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. And it's and Bill, too. Billy, Billy Smith too. is the backup. Yeah, Billy, yeah. Billy kept Second his day. license. Yeah. And it's, mm -hmm. again, the diligence part of it is our responsibility. And it's wonderful to have departments come in and tell us certain things and, and believe them. But we also have to have um, something that confirms it. So this confirms 35 hours a week. And we and I also asked for what were the comps for the wage, yeah. and that doesn't seem to be available. So I, I I don't know where they got the number, where they just looked with the number of hours and said that this is what the rate should be. I don't know. Um. So, um. Well, he was already getting a certain rate, and they just. Yeah, they, they raised the amount of hours. hours. It went from 25 to 30. It would be more. Well, originally, it went, if I understood it correctly, it went from 25 to 30 mm -hmm. because of added responsibilities. And now there's some temporary more responsibilities with the testing of the lead pipes mandated by the state, mm -hmm. etc. And so he went from 30 to 40. And okay. as you know, my gut feeling is we don't have a lot of say in what they do as long as they don't come back to the town, to this room for more money because they can't make it work. They're self-sufficient. They're self-sufficient. It's but what they're asking. Okay. Go their ahead. water rates cover their expenses. Mm -hmm. But they, they and that's their business. It is their business. And but it's not incumbent upon us to recommend it. No, it is not. I I don't think it is. I think they're they came to us and out of courtesy or whatever and said this is what we're going to be doing and we've always done it this way. Mm -hmm. But they also do it that way because it's part of the budget. We can't slice that out. No, that's part of the budget, and our responsibility is, is to build the budget, budget, budget and present the budget to the town. Correct. So we have to say whether or not we agree, and and and, and well, they're an enterprise. Yes, right? they're an enterprise. Therefore, their finances are their own purview. Right. Correct. Our problem is. If they run into trouble, exactly. And what? How do we? How is that remediate if they overspend because of that? Has had that's, this and that. That that's where, to me, that's where there's going to be an issue. Yeah, it's, sir. When they and when the water system was paid off, and we made it pretty clear that the town itself was the rest <laughs> of the townspeople who do not have town water. We're not going to be paying for town water with our tax money. I vote for that. A absolutely. And so they went on their own, which is that's what we wanted. And that's what they're doing. And but my question to that earlier, I didn't get the answer. I was looking for it. I'm uncertain about how this municipal works. Like I'll ask you, Jim, if you have someone work a Sunday, you get a break no matter what. It doesn't matter. You don't pay time and a half on Sunday or double time on Sunday or something. Someone only gets overtime when they work over 40 hours in a week. Yes. It doesn't matter what day of the week it is. Correct. Okay. That's how it gets in all municipal government? Pretty much. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's not like time and a half Saturdays. It's no. That they don't get holiday pay. They don't get any of that. No. It's a flat I, rate. Not that. No, it's a flat rate. It's a flat rate. Okay. So, so there is there is holiday pay if they have to work the holiday, like the hot department. Yeah. It's Christmas and they have to file, they get. Okay. The holiday rate. We that. have to embrace the fact that, and Tommy's right, you're right, we all understand 
the enterprise fund works on their own. But all those individuals who are who pay into the enterprise fund have to rely on this finance committee to ask the questions yep. to make sure that the um, that the requests are um, affordable and um, are in line or in keeping with everything else that's going on. Yeah, and so that's why we have to do that. Yeah, and um, I know so, I'm the only one here on top of water. I think, right? Yeah, yeah. No. yeah. So my bill went up. If Brenda is four sixty-five to seven dollars per thousand. Yeah, it's still a huge jump. It's been hundred bucks every yeah. three, four months, whatever. But um, so they went up to cover this, I think. So was that the argument for it? Um, I don't know how they. Well, the they rates have been the same for a long time. Oh, the, well, they, they, are they, they did not yeah. go up on their rates for twenty years, Paul. Or oh, 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 oh was, was, Wayne was the first one to. Yeah, yeah. He, I mean. Because the town was, all the taxpayers in town were basically paying, you know, we were paying the fund what they couldn't pay. The water is expensive. It's inexpensive. Right. In and the big picture, 25 bucks is quite cool. Yeah. So, I mean, I'd, I'd love to have town water, but I'm never going to have it. So, yeah. well, if you get it, we get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's true. Okay. So anyway, okay. So when we vote this in, um, or when we make a decision on the vote um, regarding, you know, it'll be thumbs up or thumbs down. But um, you can the say piece not, that the not piece recommended by the party. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know the piece that is missing right now, and I, and I guess it's just extrapolated based on his hourly right now. It went up to forty. So I guess that's that. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions regarding the water comments? Okay. Sorry. We're good. Um, well, can I have my little sheet in your back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my only one. Okay. Um, okay, Trish, give us a little guidance here. Uh, moving forward. <laughs> um, I'm surprised. We have seen everybody. Yes. And we have taken all the information. Yes. Okay. Um, so we need to start voting. Um, and I would much prefer to vote when Brenda's here in person, right. when Dan's back and um, we have a full, we have a full group, uh, which means, I hate to say this, but next Tuesday, next Tuesday, that'll be the last meeting. And we, we'll wrap it up, and and that'll be it until town. Good. We're gonna do it. What if Dan's not back? We're we we got to move forward. forward. Dan's not back. Then we move forward without Brenda. Well, are you there? Not. Hello, Brenda. Brenda. Okay. Well, I'll, we'll send her. Uh, we'll send her a message. I'll confirm and with her. Confirm with her. So that would be. Uh, what's the uh, date on that? Is that the? Uh, it is May. So I want to say this, but I don't know. Thirty first So the May seventh. May seventh. May seventh. Okay. So May seventh is it? So last meeting we'll yeah. vote everything, um, and and Trish will have plenty of time between now and then to take a look at that to take a look at that sheet again. Well, there's a lot of adjustments on capital. The quantity pickups, Keith's rejection. I got the quote from J D. It's a hundred J P. It's a hundred and eighty three. Yep. Plus a little cushion, um, and we can pull off the phase they two. The place. Place. Yeah. Right. Yep. So that's good. Mm -hmm. um, and you saw where we are in terms of tax rate and subsidizing. Um, yeah, I'm mildly and, confused, but 
Um, I, can, I can wait till next year. Okay, uh, or maybe you better ask. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's does that right. include taking free cash money? Yeah. Just, no. Cash. Oh, it says well, free cash remaining. Using, yeah, it's down the bottom, 225 of free cash. Yeah, but we got to find something. Yes, for your capital plan. Oh, I see. You're yeah, taking some for capital, some capital to reduce the tax. See where it says capital? Yes. Free cash. Yes. Sources and uses. So uh, now Landon is carrying the school projects to be funded out of our green communities money. I have to get more information. Oh, mini splits? Yeah. Wow. Really? So that. Boy, that would be a. Yeah. So, but you have. If you look across, there's no transfers into your stabilization funds. No. So we can play with the, you know, yep. we can come up with yep. some scenarios. But yep. yeah, you um, early reiteration, you saw this call had 200000 for free cash to subsidize. We upped it to 25 again. We'll see what that looks okay. like. Um, I think the first one was $1.18 on the tax rate. Now we're down to one hundred four. We'll again. <laughs> Um, I think in your packets, there were a few areas we identified where we could reduce in the operating, not a lot, but, but I mean, the operational and town side is pretty tight. Yeah, yeah. Um, and as I said, I can lower that wage adjustment to I go four or five. Because of the new town administrator. Yeah, so we have a new okay. town administrator. His name is Peter King. He'll start on June 17th. It's currently the assistant town administrator of Swapskip Mass. Nice. Originally from this area. Yeah, wants to move back here. Wants to move back here. Got it. And uh, wow. the board approved his employment agreement. That's why I had to leave. Wonderful. So, Peter King. Peter King. Very good. He will be introduced to town meeting. Wow. Town talking. meeting is? June 18th. Yes. 18th. Yes. Yeah, yep. correct. Very good. Okay. Um, any questions? Okay. Motion to adjourn. May make a motion. We adjourn. Right. Second. All yeah. roll call. Jim. Yeah. Yeah. Paul. Jim. Yes. Paul. Yes. Yeah. Brenda. Sure. I should stop. I should stop. Brenda, we're adjourning. Do you agree? Do you agree? Okay. Good All right, we tried hard. Okay, let's all count. All right. Yes. Hello, I'm fine. She's back. All right. Hello. Yes, I adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it wouldn't let me do. It wouldn't let me come through. All right. Anyway, thank you, team. Bye. Thank you. Bye. See ya.